Hello everyone, welcome to worship here at St. Matthew. It is the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. We are delighted to have you with us. We hope that you are blessed by this worship service. We are certainly blessed to be bringing it to you this week and every week. And now if you are ready, let us begin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into eternal life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O God, our strength, without you we are weak and wayward creatures. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside, and cleanse us from all evil that arises from within ourselves, that we may be preserved through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading is from the fourth chapter of Deuteronomy. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land that the Lord, the God of your ancestors, is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you, nor take anything away from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord your God with which I am charging you. You must obey them diligently, for this will show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other great nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, or to let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join in reading responsibly Psalm 15. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Those who lead a blameless life and do what is right, who speak the truth from their heart. They do not slander with the tongue. They do no evil to their friends. They do not cast discredit upon a neighbor. In their sight the wicked are rejected, but they honor those who fear the Lord. They have sworn upon their health and do not take back their word. They do not give their money in hope of gain, nor do they take bribes against the innocent. Those who do these things shall never be overthrown. The second lesson comes from the first chapter of James. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. 
For they look at themselves and going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the word. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they do not eat anything from the market unless they wash it. And they also observe many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold a human tradition. And he called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within. And they defile a person. The Gospel of the Lord. So I imagine you've heard that old expression, actions speak louder than words. You're also likely to have heard another expression, walk the walk, don't talk, just talk the talk. Or some variation on that, there's a lot of variations on that one floating around. But the idea is that words by themselves can often be inadequate. For example, if I say I love you, but then act in ways that give the lie to that, what are you going to believe, my words or my actions? If I say I'll help you and then never do, which one was the truth? And we've all had the experience of asking someone to do something and then they never do it. Hopefully now, you've also had the experience of someone doing something without being asked. Or the action was there without any words. That's also nice. It works both ways, in other words. See, what actions do is actions put our words into use. Actions give life and breath to our words. So love needs to be shown, not just said. Love needs to be put to work, not just said. Love needs to, to find its expression in the things we do, and not just the words we say. Focus on love, because love, to me, is the core of the gospel. So, letter of James, we're starting that right now. In James James says we should be doers of the word and not just hearers. And when I hear that, I hear that as a call to active love in the world. Love that manifests itself in things such as, to quote James again, caring for the widows and the orphans. Now, that's shorthand for caring for the poor and the needy. Since in the time of James, widows and orphans were the poorest of the poor and the neediest of the needy. So... Point is, you can listen to all the sermons you want. You can listen to me every week on these videos, all you want to do. You can listen to sermons on love, and sermons on grace, and sermons on helping the poor, and sermons on caring for the earth, and sermons about raising people up, sermons on all kinds of stuff. But if all you do is listen to them, well, then so what? If the hearing doesn't inspire you to the doing, and so what? 
So when we read the book of James, and we will be reading the book of James these next few weeks in worship, we need to approach it from the standpoint of putting our faith into action. What James is saying is, you've heard the gospel. You've read the scriptures. You've been given the grace to come to faith. You've felt the pull of the Holy Spirit. You've come to the waters of baptism. You've come to the table of Holy Communion. You've come to church. All great things, all necessary things, no doubt about it. All of them done by the grace of God and through the power of the Holy Spirit. But now what James asks is, how will all this affect the way you live? You know, the times when you're not sitting in church, the whole rest of the week. How will this affect the way you treat others? How will all this affect the things you do as a person of faith, as a disciple of Jesus, as a member of the body of Christ? How will all of this lead you to go out into wherever you go out into and be the church? How will all of this lead you to live out your faith in concrete, tangible ways? That's the challenge of James. You have faith. That's great. Now what are you going to do with it? Reminded me, I have a friend back east. And she started coming to my church. Very nice woman. Her and I became really good friends. Eventually, she was listening, hearing and all that. And she began to look for ways to put her faith into action. Good for her. So one of the things, first thing she did was she took over the leadership of the church youth group. And she became their new adult supervisor, adult mentor, teacher, and all that stuff. And eventually, that led her to become the Christian education director of the church. A wonderful job. Now, related to that, meant she then started taking our youth group on a mission trip every year. Some weird, exotic place like upstate New York or Maine or something, West Virginia of all places. Great stuff. And she was doing that, and she just she kept thinking she needed to do something more. Something more in relationship to the community outside of the church. She felt compelled partially because of, of her background and her experiences to help the needy in a more direct way. So we were talking one time and I told her about a collection we had done a couple years previous during Lent in which we assembled backpacks. And we filled those backpacks with basic, basic necessities. Toothbrush, toothpaste, comb, deodorant, socks, a knit hat, that kind of stuff. And we took these backpacks, and in cooperation with the, the seminary in Philadelphia, we went to Philadelphia and handed out these backpacks to homeless people. Um, because, A, they get all the, 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 the stuff, but they also get the backpack, which gives them a means to carry stuff. And she thought, we could do more stuff like that. I said, great, go for it. So her and her husband, they began collecting these kind of basic supplies again. And they took a trip to Philadelphia, and they handed the stuff out. And while she was there, she met some of the folks on the street, some of the homeless folks. And she saw their need, and she was, she was really touched by how daily that need was, how constant that need really was. So she kept on collecting stuff. She started adding food to her collecting. She got her whole family involved. She got the church youth group involved. She got the rest of the church involved in all manners of ways. And it ended up that her and her husband and her family and different friends and people from the church and all that, they started going to Philadelphia every single weekend. Every weekend, they're down, they're, they're down on the streets, they're, they're down in the subway tunnels. They're, they're meeting people, and their, their team grew, and they got to develop relationships with all these homeless folks that they're encountering in Philadelphia, and it's taken off so much that this homegrown little ministry is now a full-on not-for-profit organization that she's, in, she's incorporated, made of a 501c3 or whatever that, that's called. And I'm so proud of her for that, because she became a doer of the word and not a hearer of the word, and, and before you all start panicking... I am not saying that we should all go out and try to do something on that scale. 
That was just the Holy Spirit lighting a fire and she ran with it. What I am saying is we all can be doing something. So I read a devotion, so I read devotions every week, obviously. Um, get them on the internet, very nice. This one's by a, a retired professor named James Boyce. And he said, we need to get beyond mere right words on our lips and let our hearts lead us to actions of love and service that can bring wholeness of life for our world. In other words, it's not hard. We are all called to respond to God's call to act from the heart in love and service to our neighbor and to understand who our neighbor is in the broadest possible terms, as in, everybody is my neighbor. Regardless of who they are, or what they are, or where they are, everybody is our neighbor. I suspect the real challenge in all of this is discerning what to actually do. Um, I remember the title book by Mike Slaughter was, You Can't Do Everything, So Do Something. We all have unique gifts and talents and abilities and resources. You can't all be doing the same thing. So some may indeed go and literally feed the homeless on the streets. Some of you may decide to go build houses. Somebody may volunteer in a food pantry. Maybe what you can do is donate needed supplies. I don't know. Somebody may become an advocate for the needy or the oppressed or the abused. Um, I was reading a review of a new book on the Beatitudes today. It's a book I intend to get. It sounds like a really good book. And at one point, it mentioned the Beatitudes about blessed are the meek. And you'll recall James talks about meekness in our reading today, too. And the book suggests that contrary to what we might think of when we hear the word meek, meek can actually be a peculiar form of power rooted in the wisdom to know, and this is what the author said, what to get angry about, how to be angry, and for how long. So I took that, and I said, well, yeah, that applies to this. As we seek to become doers of the word, we need, I think, to follow that kind of pattern. What can we do, how do we do it, and for how long? Each of us will need to find our own ways to be doers of the word. Each of us will have to find our own ways to go beyond passive hearing to active doing. The one constant in all this is that God will be with us. The Holy Spirit will be empowering us, and Jesus will be there in the eyes of those we help, in the words of thanks, in the lives changed, in the hope given, and in the love shared. Because to be a doer of the word is to be the hands and feet of Jesus. To be a doer of the word is to be the voice of Jesus. To be a doer of the word is to be a bringer of good news. See, we are called by God in order that we can be sent by God. And so we are blessed by God in order that we can become a blessing from God. You hear it all the time in the ELCA. We do God's work with our hands. Because faith is an action. And love is an action. And as I've said to you all before, Christian is a verb. It's a thing we do. We are not to be armchair Christians. We are to go out and love and help and be a, a, an active, present, engaged, involved agent of grace. And you get to do it in your own unique and wonderful way. The challenge of James is, is in your own wonderful, unique way, become a doer of God's word. Amen. Please join with me now in confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. We pray for the church, that it is a safe haven for all who seek your presence. Fill it with pastors, deacons, and leaders who echo your expansive and generous welcome. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the whole of creation, that plants and animals have the habitat and resources to thrive and flourish. Inspire us to protect threatened habitats and ensure a sustainable future for generations to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for individuals in positions of authority. Raise up wise and discerning leaders in federal, state, and local governments and guide them to seek the benefit of every person. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are in need. Support and encourage those who are unemployed, underemployed, or experiencing poverty. Bring food, shelter, clothing, and stability for daily life. We pray your presence upon those who were affected by Henri, those who are affected by the earthquake and the storm in Haiti, those who have been affected by fire and drought throughout the United States, the people of Afghanistan, those who are trapped, those who are trying to escape, those who must live under a new regime. We pray for peace in all of the troubled regions of our world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our congregation, especially those beginning a new school year. Empower teachers and school administrators. Guide students in their learning and development. Accompany parents, foster parents, and caregivers who provide encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially for John, Isabella, Danielle, Gerald and Judy, Garris, Don, Brad and Sharon, Rick, Dorothy, Margot, Carolyn, Dee Dee, Shirley, Glendale, Judy, Lana, Theo, Elaine, Joyce, Merle, Wanda, and those we name in our hearts before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who have been raised to eternal life, we give thanks. With all the saints, we praise you for the bread of life that keeps us in your love forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Please take a moment now to share God's peace with those whom you are worshiping with today. Once again, folks, thank you all for being with us today. Um, always blessed to be able to bring you these worship services. We're also blessed by your many acts of kindness and support throughout these difficult days. Um, we thank you for your volunteering, for your prayers, your kind words. We also thank you for your financial support as you are able to give it to us. If you would like to support the ministry of St. Matthew with a financial gift, you may go to our website and make a gift through the link you find there. You may, of course, use the postal service to send us a gift through the mail. In all things, we are so thankful for your love and support. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your love, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. Please take a moment now to share the bread and wine, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. You are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. Once again, folks, thank you all for being with us. Be well, be safe, have a great week in the Lord, and we will see you all again very, very soon. Bye-bye, everyone.